Hello, welcome back to Brand of Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, we're gonna do a quick study of a JSON file format. I have this app currently, it's called uh, Paraview. Paraview is, a, I think it's an open source uh, app, just like Blender. And you can, basically what's interesting about this app is that it allows you to observe a mesh. And also, because it's it, this is like a, an app that can read a VTU type of format, kind of like scientific stuff. And what uh, what interests me is the the way it handles color. So currently we have this uh, blue to red gradient kind of applied, but we also have all kind of a different um, library of color ramp that we can apply into this object. Uh, yeah, this is I think I found it's really really interesting. And one thing in particular is that how this program actually export out. The color ramp so let me try doing it very quickly so it's saving it as json some kind of json file format it saved the color and so also save the opacity so let's uh, do a quick test save it as uh, sushi color 001 and then okay it saves it and i wonder if i should tick that but don't worry about that so this is the, the file. If I open it with a sublime text, it's a JSON type of format. At a glance, it's maybe uh, there is an XML, there is a JSON. With JSON, you see a lot of uh, kind of like bracketing. And I, I like JSON. It seems like a simpler format to work with. And here you can see there is like a <clears throat> the key and value kind of uh, data. The color space is lab. It can be RGB, HSV. The name is uh, greens. This is the RGB points. Maybe this contains the uh, RGB and opacity. I'm not quite sure. You can test it yourself, and then maybe it store it as a single list of value. Maybe if you split it by four, um, every four is become RGBA. Uh, we pro probably need to read documentation if we ever want to export out the color from here to blender um, yeah but what's interesting also that you can select multiple and then export it out let's say save this as sushi color 002 and if we check this file now it contains actually it contains multiple presets so this one only contains one and this one contains multiple preset I actually at some point I I try to import it into Blender um, using Spherechalk add-on because Spherechalk can. Uh, there is one um, node in Spherechalk that can read color, and that's uh, the the text in. Let me show you. But uh, that JSON doesn't actually import the the color directly. Uh, you need to kind of make modifications. But that's the thing with XML and JSON. I think it's like a. It's a type of file format, but it also has file structure that's kind of dynamic. You need to make a ways to parse uh, data depending on what you're working on. But it's possible to export from here to Blender. And what's nice from the, this app of uh, Paraview, you can import more gradient. There's like a hundred thousand or unlimited number of gradients that you can Im export import between uh, software. So this is actually a good uh, source of gradient library. There's a lot of color gradient. Uh, I think they use it in scientific kind of visualization. Look at this. It's kind of really interesting. And so I'm thinking maybe I, have, I can study JSON a little bit more. Let's look at JSON in Spherechalk first. Uh, let's get started. So this is JSON study. And it's actually quite interesting. Once you look at a, you look at these color stripes, right? Color ramp or gradient, or, and you you see each one of them has a name. And each one of them, of course, have all this bunch of color. And you know that even in Blender, you have like a color ramp node. And if you look at this, and then you abstract the the data, <clears throat> whatever that can be measured, like in this case, of course, color color can be measured as RGB. A, if it, is, if it contains alpha, you can turn it into this kind of value data. 
And that's kind of uh, my understanding of abstraction. So same thing in a, in a square choke or in Blender, everything is kind of data, but you don't always see it. Sometimes it's really abstract, but let's try. Let's try with uh, something really quick. So text in and text out. This is the nodes that's dealing with data. We, we know CSV is a type of data that's a kind of a common comma separated value. You can try that. We start to look at, I'm starting to look at the JSON type of format. And let's see how it looks in Spreadshop. So let's say we want to send uh, some kind of data. Let's say Suzanne, okay, Suzanne have vertices, edges, faces. We know that if we connect Suzanne to viewer draw, you get Suzanne because it has a vertices information and then polygon information. If you want just the edges, you also have this edges information. At any point, you can split the data, you know, just uh, you can have uh, maybe only parts of the data. Let's say you, you slice, slice the data and then Test it out. So you can slice Susan data at any time. And then let's say you just want the face, you don't want the head. You can use it as a mask, maybe. You can easily bake that and you get a just Susan mask. This one, uh, and at any time, you can send this um, data that you cannot see the data, but you can send it to JSON. You can dump it. So let's try. This is the data, vertices data, for example, you just, you dump it and now you can see there is a JSON type of data here. This is the abstract version of uh, Suzanne, as abstract as it can get that uh, still human readable. You have, you can see the value of the vector XYZ position. Every points have a XYZ position. And then also this is like in order of the index. It says actually the, the name of the nodes, Suzanne, and then the vertices is the, the this output, and then the V um, is the, the vector type of the data, vector type tree data, okay? You also have a couple of other type of data, you know, like ages is actually, an, uh, what do you call it? Age indices, if, if I dump the data, the ages is slightly different, this one, Susan, edges, uh, outport, and type of data is string. There's a two data, not not string. This is like a single, but it's, there's like multiple value here, and the faces also similar. There you go. That's the face indices data. How um, the vertices index kind of connected to create a polygon face. So that's Suzanne, right? And when at any time we can rename the, the nodes, uh, let's say call this a Carol and then dump the data. Oops. Now it says oh, error because uh, we need to probably reconnect this guy. Now it says Carol instead of Suzanne. So that's, uh, that's how Spreadshop can export the data into this uh, abstract value. And uh, remember that at any point in time, you can send this data, this uh, text, is this JSON file. You can send it to by email, and then you you can reopen it here. Like a, uh, you can load it. You can see it, you can see this is Carol vertices, Carol faces, and then you can connect it to Viewer Draw, and you get another Suzanne. And this uh, Suzanne, of course, has been transferred. You know, from J from JSON, from, from these nodes, it's export out as this JSON type format, and you send it by email, whatever, transfer it, and then it, you beam to Suzanne, and then you get this pink Suzanne. So let me stop the playback. So I found that uh, really, really interesting, and in a way that's uh, even uh, like, uh, if you're, let's say you're dealing with a color ramp, this is um this is an old blend file. Uh, I remember at some point I was experimenting with a cycles color ramp and how in in 
using spread chalk, you can kind of uh, create a system where, let's say you have this uh, a couple of color ramp, right? At this point, I can actually control the color ramp gradient procedurally. Um, I will give you this example again, but I remember it was in one of the live noting. How is this possible? This uh, First of all, color ramp in cycles or color compositor can have um, up to 32 slices of color. So at any time, I can kind of delete them and then let's say just have two. And then if I update it, this will um, kind of conform to whatever I set up here. And moreover, I can at any time randomize the color of this, uh, what do you call it? Color, there's a name for this guy. Color start and stop, yeah. Well, anyway, I could always randomize the color as I need it. So RGB, so this one is RGB. Just now I, I'm using HSV in, uh, in here and then you get a different result. It's kind of uh, interesting when you apply HSP into RGB, uh, but anyhow, probably this is uh, more correct. At any time, I can increase the number. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six stop. And then if I update this, this will generate six color. So this is also interesting. And then the setup, if I summarize um, this one, you already know this takes the any uh, take this mesh and then applying the color ramp into the mesh. So this is the cycles nodes. And spread chalk nodes is like this. This grab the materials, goes into the node tree of the material, which is this guy, and then goes into the color ramp nodes, observe the color ramp nodes, and then look at the, each of the elements, and then control the elements using this range float. This is controlling the position of the color ramp between 0 and 1. So that's why we have this. <clears throat> Another one, <clears throat> actually um, look at the color. And here where, where I modify the color ramp of cycles node using spread chop. So this is color data. And since we are talking about JSON here, we can at any time um, dump, let's turn off auto dump, just dump the color into this JSON type of format. And this is what I like to have and like to observe a little bit more. Maybe you also want to study this more because here we have a couple of nodes coming in, right? And pretty sure we can just dump in the color, but currently I have the RGB. And, but the, I didn't name it properly yet. So let's try doing that. Let's say this one should be red. This one is green. This one is blue, just uh, for sake of simplicity, but they can be HSV. So I dump, if I dump the, oops, it says error again. I reconnect, now we have a proper one. So you can see this is the note, name of the nodes, red. This is the value, the value is the, the output. It should say, yeah, it's a value. So red value, a single value, and excuse me, and then, the, so we have red, blue, and green and there's this also additional socket order red green blue and this json uh, is a slightly different format to to this guy right here just slightly different but it's, it's nice to be able to see this and then at some point you can parse you can parse the data maybe not using spread chalk but using python you, you can parse it because spread chalk currently doesn't have this uh, mechanism to to kind of uh, decorate the json format but this is quite uh, feasible, quite understandable. This is the red value, the blue, and then the green. Also, the position, maybe the position you want it. Uh, this is the position in there. So that's the range float. I think this is the position. Within 0 and 1, you want to place the color ramp. And by doing that, of course, if um, this app or other apps depending on how they store the, the color ramp in JSON format or whatever XML, you can always parse it and read it. Um, so that's how you can kind of blend um, the abstract value between, between apps. So 
Yeah, so that's uh, really my kind of like a propositions of this uh, kind of like a data abstraction and then how you can you can really save value, you know, red, blue, green, and then this position. You, you save it out and this can become some kind of preset library. I'm pretty sure there is like an add-on for Blender that can save presets of color ramp. But this, I think this can help uh, us, you know. Currently, um, this with this color ramp, the way it works is that I need to add or minus the color here and then adjust it. Um, and then once I change the, the number of position here, I can change the color here randomly. But in a more ideal situations, I could control everything using nodes and then this should change dynamically, you know, the, the data should change dy dynamically. Whenever I, I load a preset, this should change um, automatically. So that's uh, in ideal ways and I'm still working on that. See, this is how I look at the, the data as a non-programmer and thanks to add-on like Spreadshop and all these nodes really can help me <clears throat> understand all this uh, abstract uh, data. So this is abstract. Oh, this is color ramp randomizer actually that's the name of the nodes but you, you can study this uh, so once you have because once you export the data you can always bring the data in as text in and then once you bring the data in you understand what it is actually all about this is a json type of format that spreadshop understands so you can have red green blue and the position and you can easily plug this back into the nodes and then you get some kind of color ramp, color ramp presets. So yeah, of course, all these can be simplified with codes. But with codes, even the abstract data is no longer, you know, no longer feasible. With this, you still everything's still feasible. So I think this is good if you're just studying with programming, or if you want to explain something to a non-programmer and you want to explain the tool. This is how you do it, I guess. So there you go. Hopefully, you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.